Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant, powered by Come On Out of the Podcast. I'm your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomont. Let's jump on in on the topic at hand. The Miami Hurricanes are traveling to Georgia Tech tomorrow. They play at high noon in Atlanta against the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. If people remember last year, Georgia Tech was that game that basically ended Miami's season. It, it was the game that saw Mario Cristobal have the biggest gaffe probably in human history as a coach in a, of any level of football when he decided to not kneel the ball out with no time left, really. Uh, it just was the dumbest decision in the history of college of, of, of any level of football. Miami ended up losing the game. Yes, there was a fumble by Don Chaney on that play that ended up being an actual, he was down, but they did not reverse it somehow. Um, so Georgia Tech went on to win that game a couple plays later <clears throat> and shocked the Hurricanes 23-20 in Miami. Miami is different. Miami is a different squad this year. Miami has talent this year they didn't have last year. Um, especially when you talk about Cam Ward. Cam Ward is the best quarterback in college football, period, point blank. We are seeing a different level of player than we saw last year when he was at Washington State. You know, I thought he was good, but they were six and six. You surround him now with talent, and now you see a different level of guy. So, yeah, Cam Ward is that is the highest been favorite as far as I'm, I'm concerned, and if he continues to play the way he's played all season <clears throat> and finishes these last three games, and also a presumed ACC championship game with the way he's played, it would shock me if he wasn't the third Heisman Trophy winner in University of Miami football history. That said, Georgia Tech has always been a headache for the Miami Hurricanes. Always. Always been a headache. But Miami has been successful in Atlanta. Miami won two years ago in Atlanta 35-14. Miami won in Atlanta in 2016 35-21. Miami won in Atlanta 42-36 in 2012. Miami won in Atlanta in 2010, 35-10. What's funny is Miami has, has struggled at home largely against Georgia Tech. There have not been any massive, massive blowouts, like 52-10 to 10 type of deals. That has not happened. It, but what you have seen is you have, have, you've had some large victories of two, three touchdowns. And right now, the Miami Hurricanes have the best offense in, in college football. They average 47.4 points per game, um, which is just ahead of Indiana, who's at 46.6. Fact is, Miami's offense is explosive. Miami, Miami's offense can score points. Miami's offense can move the ball at will. But this is also the best defense that Miami will have played this year. All that said, Georgia Tech has been, out with, been without its starting quarterback the last couple of weeks. Minus Haynes King, and they can't score. They've scored 19 points. They lost 31 13 um, <clears throat> at home against Notre Dame, and then they got beat 21 6 at Virginia Tech. They can't score. So, what does this mean? It, mean, it means that if Haynes King can't play, Miami is probably going to roll to a huge win. <clears throat> that said, Haynes King's going to play. Uh, he has a bum shoulder, but dude is going to play like, like let, let's let's stop he's at least going to try to play that i will say he's at least going to try to play he has been out the last couple of weeks and the coach for the uh for georgia tech brent key says that he is a game time decision he's going to play i would be stunned if he didn't play now could he end up getting knocked out of the game yeah I, the, the the key the key for Georgia Tech obviously it's basically one thing keep Miami's offense off the field which means they have to run the ball exceptionally well historically Georgia Tech's been a good running team they have they've relied on the run are they the same team in terms of running the ball this year that they were in the past when they were running heavy heavy triple option type of stuff um you know, they, they run the ball well. They they run the ball for 1,591 yards. They, they, you know, they are successful on the ground. Their best running back is Jamal Haynes, but he's also been dinged up himself. So will he play? I, I, I presume he will. Their two leading rushers are Jamal Haynes and Haynes King. Haynes King is an, is an athletic quarterback who can go. That can cause Miami some problems. 
But let's be real. We know where Miami will struggle. We know where Miami does struggle. Miami struggles in the secondary. Miami's run defense is very good. It's very good. Is it susceptible to big plays happening? Yes, Miami's defense overall is susceptible to big plays happening against them. They give a big chunk yardage plays. Miami's defense has to do one thing. It has to be stop the run, or two things, stop the run and put pressure on whoever's playing quarterback. And if it's Haynes King, you need to be relentless. We need to see some sacks. I don't want to see pressure with no sack. I want to see pressure with sacks. That's what has to happen. They have to sack the quarterback. Now, they also have to jump out. You cannot afford to fall behind in the first half because you're pussyfooting around, dicking around with these dink and dunk, swing screen passes to wide receivers. Miami has to come out aggressive, 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 and jump on these guys fast and end the day quickly. We've seen what can happen on the road with Miami. Shootout after shootout. You saw it at Cal. You saw it at Louisville. Shootouts. We don't need to have a shootout here. This shouldn't be a shootout. Miami's a much better team than Georgia Tech. But Miami has to be disciplined defensively. You cannot fall for the okie doke. You're going to see tons of motion. Tons of it. It's proven to work against Miami's defense. It worked. By, Duke did it all game. It worked. It worked. So Miami has to be disciplined. They have to play with a discipline. Stick to your assignments. Do not bite on the okie doke. You know what I'm talking about. The misdirections, the double passes, all that other crap that teams like to do. Flea flicker, you, you name it. You cannot fall for that crap. And you have to tackle. It's very simple. This is not a complicated. When it comes to the Miami Hurricanes this year, it is not a complicated pro, co, co, situation. Score. And the defense cannot get – the defense has to be good enough. They have to be good enough. That's all. They don't have to be great, just good enough. If you look at Georgia Tech, they don't score a ton of points. 24 against Florida State, 35 against Georgia State, 28 Syracuse, 59 versus BMI, who cares? 19 versus Louisville, 24 against Duke, 41 against North Carolina. And if you look at the, the numbers, Haynes King threw for 127 yards in that game. His best game at 312 against Louisville, they got smacked. Miami is better than Georgia Tech. We know this, but it hasn't stopped Miami from losing to Georgia Tech in the past. Cam Ward needs to come out and be Cam Ward. The offensive line has to set the tone, smash Georgia Tech off the ball, and the defensive line has to set the tone the other way. If you have a lead, if you, if you have a two-touchdown lead going into halftime, this game is a wrap. Miami is a second-half team. Nothing to be concerned about. But if this game is even going into halftime, yes, there's things to be concerned about. If Georgia Tech's hitting Miami for big plays, there are things to be concerned about. Miami's an 11-point favorite, which is actually not that big of a number. There were 22-point favorites against Duke, and, like, bro, you know, uh, Duke only scored 14 points against Georgia Tech in the 24-14 loss. Miami gives up points. Miami has to be disciplined. It's that simple. Be disciplined. If Miami doesn't give it the big play, Miami doesn't get beat. The big play is what kills Miami. And they're still undefeated. But the big play is what kills Miami. The big play is what allows teams to stick with Miami. Canes have an elite offense. Do not be bland. Do not be boring. Do not allow Georgia Tech to dictate what you do. You dictate to Georgia Tech what's going to happen. It's what Miami did against Duke last week in the second half. Offensively, they said, this is what's going to happen, Duke, and ain't nothing you can do about it. But in the past, against Florida State, Miami kind of let FSU dictate tempo and pace, which is why I said they played like trash in that game, because FSU should never be dict dictating tempo and pace with that team. All that said, Cam Ward's going to go for 350. Miami's going to win this game 48-21. It won't matter that Haynes King comes back to play. These are all my opinions, my projections. But Miami's going to blow Georgia Tech out of the building. That is my projection, 48-21 Miami. 
And then we got Wake Forest, which should be a pre- pretty simple game the week, you know, week or two weeks after, whenever, whenever we play Wake Forest against the 23rd. And then we have to get ready for the big, the next biggest game of the year, Syracuse. Syracuse is real. Don't sleep on Syracuse. People think that Miami's cakewalking this thing into the ACC championship. And I can't stand this attitude that the national media puts on the ACC dismissing these teams. Louisville's good. Louisville's good. Syracuse is good. Virginia Tech is good. These are good teams. They don't have to be great teams, but they're good teams. There's no real great, great, great teams in any conference this year. There's really good teams, and there's good teams. Miami's a really good team. I'm not a great team. Miami's a really good team. Miami can be a great team if they play the right way. Georgia can be a great team. Are they a great team this year? No. Bama, are they a great team this year? No. Texas, no. Oregon, Oregon's not a great team. They're a really good team. Ohio State, same shit. This is a wide open race for a national championship this year. I'm telling you right now. You play great on that one day, you will win. You don't, you will lose. Because a lot of these teams are very, very easy. The teams that don't make the playoff are going to be pretty even across the board. Boise State lost by three at Oregon. These teams are even. This is a, this is as much. NIL has created so much parity in college football, yet the rankings disrespect the ACC constantly. Miami 48-21. That's my call. Miami's going to pound them, pound them, pound them, dominate this game from start to finish. There will be no doubt left. Miami 48-21. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Appreciate y'all. It's Rudy's rant. Come on out of the podcast. Back over feelings, baby. Come on now.